What's poppin'? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So glad that you're here. Tell me all the things. What's happening with you? Gosh, a lot's happening. Uh, I just wrapped up my uh, second album. Um, it's finally starting to roll out here. It's going to be rolling out all summer. Mm-hmm. Um, we're putting out a new song every two weeks. Um, we shot 12 more music videos, just like I did for my first album. Really? So we're doing a lot of work, but uh, it's worth it for sure. How do you feel, being as though the album is wrapped up, it's out in the world, essentially? I feel relieved. Really? I feel relieved. Um, I actually conceptualized this album uh, all the way back in April of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, this was something that I sort of came up with um, during quarantine. I had a lot of time on my hands, just like a lot of people, and I sort of drew up this whole vision for Pillbox during that time period. So I've been working on it for you know, quite some time now, even though it's just now starting to come out. Absolutely. How do you even come up with a vision with something like that? Are you like driving down the street? Are you hiking? Are you doing (laughs) something like that? That like, I guess, sparks that inspiration. You know what? It's actually not very exciting. I was sitting on my bedroom floor in the middle of the night, um, just kind of writing off ideas, thinking about, you know, what I was going to do for project number two. I had a couple names in mind and then, you know, Pillbox sort of came to mind and all of a sudden it's like, I almost feel like it's a channel from like the universe or like some higher power because this idea just floods. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm like, OK, this, 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 that and the other. And everything's just right there. And it comes very quickly. So that's how I know I'm on the right path is when I have an idea that just all the little details fall into place. Right really? away. Even when you're writing songs, is that the same case? Does everything just like come into place? Really? I think so. I I always say the best songs are usually 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Anything that just comes really quickly, um, I think, is the most authentic. Um, And I ultimately try to um, not force any sort of creativity. So if I'm really struggling with any sort of idea for anything, I'll move on. You know, I want to keep keep my brain active, keep going. So, um yeah, I, I try to work pretty quickly. Just let it all flow through. It's interesting because I always wanted to like write a song and everybody's like, oh, you can write a song, blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But I think that it's not that easy. Like, I'm, I'm sure everybody can write a song, right? But it won't necessarily be good. So <laughs> what are some of the exercises that you feel like you do to strengthen that muscle while writing a song? I mean, I think I've just been doing it for a really long time. Even though I'm only 20 years old, I think I wrote my first song probably at five or six. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom always tells everyone that I used to go around the house and I would sing these like 20 minute songs, like all the vocabulary that I had, I would just, you know, put with a melody and I'd be, you know, performing to everybody. Um, And I also started piano really young as well. Um, And for writing music, I think that knowing or learning an instrument is really important um, Mm. because I almost always start with a guitar or a piano or, um, you know, if I'm working on the computer, like a synthesizer, anything like that. I think it's really important to have that musical foundation before jumping into, you know, the melody, the lyrics, et cetera. That sounds really interesting because I can't play an instrument. So I guess I would (laughs) I would be sucking when it comes to writing the song and whatnot. I mean, you know, I can't read music. You can't? So I can't read music at all. I play by ear. Um, when I was little, I went through a lot of teachers who tried to teach me how to read music. Could never get a grasp on it. Um, and I didn't let that stop me. I just kept kept practicing, kept playing. Um, and, yeah, I think uh, it allows me more creative freedom. It's not like I have to look at a sheet music or anything like that or mm-hmm. look at a certain pattern. I kind of just play. I listen. And whatever I hear that I like, I write a song to it. Grace, have you ever went back and listened to those earlier songs and you're like, (laughs) Um, for sure. Uh, My mom really likes to listen to some of my songs that I wrote when I was 10, 11, 12 years Mm -hmm. old. And, you know, I listen to them now and I'm like, what in the world was I talking about? You know, what did I know at 12 years old that I was like writing this like song? Um, But it's funny because I actually just recently um, recorded uh, Pink Cadillac by mm-hmm. Bruce Springsteen. I did mm-hmm. a cover of it. And the inspiration for that cover actually came from a recording that I did when I was 10 years old of that mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. And we were able to layer my vocals at 10 and my vocals at 20 on top of each other for the chorus. Get which was here. really cool. Yeah, it was like, it was kind of weird hearing like, you know, me grown up, you know, singing with my younger self. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty pretty cool. If you can say one thing to that 10-year-old, right, in the bedroom, (laughs) 
writing songs. What do you what would you say to that 10 year old Grace? Oh, gosh, so many things. But if I had to pick one in particular, I would say keep creating Mm. because you never know what you're going to sort of stumble upon. You never know when that moment or that, you know, that great idea is going to hit. I used to get really frustrated when I was younger because, you know, it was hard to write music at 12, 13, 14. You don't feel like you have the resources or the tools or the life experience right. um, in order to sort of work on your craft. So I think, you know, I would just say keep creating. The more the more you do it, the better you get. Um, and, you know, I think that creativity is probably the best medicine that I personally have ever found. So, you know, keep creating. <laughs> creativity is the best medicine that you've ever had. Yes. Explain that for me. Well, as someone who has struggled with mental health issues most of my life, um, anxiety, depression, um, you know, things like that, um, they like to offer up a lot of different, you know, ideas, a lot of medications, um, a lot of therapy, and all of those things do work. And I think those things are great. But for me, when I'm having those days where I don't even want to get out of bed, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything at all. Um, I always find that being creative is something that um, fuels my fire. It reignites my soul. It makes me want to keep working. It gets me active again. Um, you know, I have been actually the past couple of days um, just been feeling a little bit down on the dumps, and I decided that I was going to make all new art for my room. And so last night I was downstairs, and I was just, you know, doing all these canvases and things like that. So I think there's a lot of power in creativity. Um, I think it uh, you know, sort of gets your brain going and mm-hmm. puts you on a totally new wavelength and gets you out of those kind of depressive like ruts. Um, so I think it's it's a magical tool um, mm. if it's something that you're interested in. Grace, would you say that that is uh, almost therapeutic? Absolutely. I think music is therapeutic. Um, I described Black Box as like an open sort of like therapy session. Mm-hmm. Um because I talked about all the things that I had gone through as a young teenager growing up, navigating the world. Um, and it was almost like, you know, the equivalent of me telling my therapist, except I had some chords and I had some lyrics and uh, I put it out for the whole world to see. That's interesting. What do you feel like was the most difficult thing that you've encountered while growing up? Um, maybe the exploration um, of my sexuality. I think a lot of the bullying that I went through was rooted in that. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in high school, um, I didn't get to tell my own story. I I got outed by somebody else. Um, Which sidebar high school is probably what, like, uh, four or five years, not four, maybe three years ago. Yeah. I graduated about three years ago. Right. Yeah. It was, it wasn't super long ago. And it's, it's interesting that that is something that you were still dealing with. I'm trying to do the math. 2017, 2018, (laughs) what, 20 something. It's recent. It's very recent. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that was that was really tricky for me because kids were particularly mean about um, that topic in general. And I always say, you know, people can there are sort of comments like, you know, you're ugly or you're fat. And I got all those, too. And mm-hmm. I in my mind, I was like, OK, it's fine. I'm going to get older. I'm going to grow out of it. My mom used to tell me everyone's got that awkward, terrible phase in puberty. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you get older and you're going to be fine. And you you're blossom. Gonna, yeah. And you're going to be great. Right. And then it was like that sexuality piece I was saying, I was like, they finally got me on something that I will never be able to change about myself. Mm. That's my truth. It's the unchangeable. So what do I do with that? You know, it's like they they hit me in a spot that I was never going to be able to, you know, really do anything about. So I think the worst type of um, bullying or insult that you could ever say to someone is something that they're never really going to be able to change about themselves. Um, it definitely hits the hardest. And so I think that's why... Um, you know, that piece of my journey would probably be uh, one of the trickier ones. So when you were in hi- high school and you were outed, what was the situation? Oh, gosh. Um, a picture was posted um, on the Internet um, of me kissing another girl. Um, I didn't know about the photo. Um, you know, my entire school saw it. Um, and even though, you know, it got taken down Pretty quickly, uh, you know, people take screenshots, people repost things. Um, And so, yeah, it was a it was not a good moment. I remember I was in um, a dressing room with my mom. I was just trying on clothes Mm -hmm. um, and I opened my phone. My heart sunk and I was like, no, 
know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I ran out of the dressing room and I, I showed her and I just, I broke down um, mm. because I knew at that point that school was going to be 10 times harder than it already was. It was never going to be the same. Yeah. Can't put that genie back in the bottle. Yep, exactly. So just meeting your mother for um, the couple of minutes that I have, I know she went up to that school and raised hell, didn't she? <laughs> um, You know, I... I applaud my mom a lot. I think that she um, did a really great job helping me navigate some very, very choppy waters that I went through in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, she definitely had some moments where uh, there were a couple of things that happened where I'm sure she just, you know, she did want to go down to that school and, you know, just tell these kids. But she kept it profesh. She kept it professional and she ultimately, um, you know, would reinforce to me that this ends, high school ends, there's light at the end of that tunnel. And one day you're going to get through there and you're going to look around and you're going to see this entire world that you didn't even know existed. Right. And so I think that she really helped me to keep a positive mindset and knowing that high school wasn't going to last forever. And I was going to come out on that other side and have, you know, a whole life ahead of me. That is the best piece of advice For that sure. you can get as a child going through a situation like that. Like it's going to end. And yeah. then those kids are going to come up to you wanting your autograph when they see you on stage doing something. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely true. Um, I think that's the hardest thing about being young and feeling stuck. Um, and especially for kids who are getting bullied or are having problems at home, you feel like it's going to last forever. You feel like it's so permanent. And the reality is it's not. You just have to get through it. And that's the hardest part is just, you know, staying strong enough and finding those inner resources to get through that difficult time period. You know what I really appreciate you? The fact that you are turning something that happened to you and you're talking about it to let kids know that's going through it right now, that they're not alone or this is not nothing new and that, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. You know, I think when I was in school, I didn't realize just how many other kids were feeling the exact same way that I was. And it wasn't until I put out Black Box And I received thousands and thousands of messages of kids explaining to me how Red helped them come out to their parents or, you know, Code Black became their go to song during a depressive episode or how 93 Days helped them go to therapy. And it was in that moment, seeing all those messages, I was like, wow, you know, there are so many people out there going through the exact same thing. And the reason, you know, that we all feel so alone is we don't talk about it. Mm. We just, we hold it all inside. We bottle it up. And in doing that, we don't realize that there are millions of people who are having the exact same experience that we are. You know, we're not alone in our struggles. Um, And I think that's a really important thing to sort of acknowledge um, as human beings is that we all go through the same things. Mm -hmm. It's just, you got to be brave enough to talk about it. It's really interesting. When you do songs like that, I'm sure... Is that the intent? Yeah, I think I, in writing music, I never want to write a song just to write a song. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to write a song to tell a story, um, to share a message, um, to stand up for a community of people who've been marginalized, specifically, you know, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I'm honored to be a part of it, but I do know that it's a community that's faced a lot of discrimination for a very long time. Um, And so I always want to try to have Um, some sort of higher message, higher priority in my music. I want it to mean something to people. Um, There's a lot of great music out there that's super fun and it's fun to listen to and it's fun to dance to. And then uh, there are songs that, um, you know, really change people's lives and that's the music that I ultimately try to write. Are you ever nervous putting out songs like that? For sure. I think that you never know how anyone's going to react. I remember... When I put out Red, um, which was the third track on Black Box, and that Mm -hmm. was a song about my sexuality, Mm -hmm. um, I remember being really nervous because I had never publicly addressed it before. Um, It was something that, you know, I didn't really deny it, but I also never said anything about it. I sort of just um, existed, you know, as I am. And when I put that song out, I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a ton of backlash. People are going to say horrible things. You know, I was really nervous that day. And, you know, I put the song out and it got a ton of views, a ton of love, so many comments. And it was just like a moment where I was like, wow, okay, you know, I didn't need to be afraid because I found this entire community of people come around that song and empower it and use it. And so that was really, really beautiful to see. So 
although I do have fear, um, mm-hmm. you know, putting certain things out, I think that ultimately the payoff when those things do finally, you know, come out into the world, it's very cool to see just how many people can relate. Looking back at that situation or being scared or nervous, putting a song out like that, are you like, why, why was I afraid? Why was I scared? Why? <laughs> um, you know, I think it's always scary sharing your story or sharing, um, you know, your vulnerabilities with the world. Um, I didn't learn until recently just how powerful being vulnerable can be. Um, I think people um, somehow get it in their brains that, you know, we're supposed to keep everything locked inside. We're not supposed to show weakness. We're supposed to always put up that strong front. Um, And I actually happen to think that the strongest people in the world are those who, you know, tell it how it is, say what they've been going through, you know, say what's going on. Um, and erase the stigma around so many of these issues. Because like I said, everybody goes through this stuff. We just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the second everybody, you know, starts talking, you realize that this is a collective thing that happens. You know, it's not just the individual. It's, you know, us as human beings as a whole. That's really interesting how it really is like, Almost to the to the the saying no idea is original. Like no, this is no original problems. Like we're all going through the same thing. It's just the fact that no one's really saying anything about it or talking about it. Exactly, and I I think it's really important, um, you know, to me as an artist to sort of try to be that voice, be that guide for this next generation of kids who are sort of coming up, and um, I think that they are gonna grow up in a world that was far more complex than the world that I grew up in. And and even yourself, you know, I think the world's changing. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a scarier place now, especially with the internet and social media and all that's going on. And so um, I just want to try to be a voice of guidance, a voice of reason. um, And, you know, try to ultimately spread that message that it's going to get better. You're going to get through it. You just gotta, you gotta, you know, just push through um, put your head down, do the work, and eventually that, that tunnel opens up for you. That's really interesting. I always say to myself, I could not imagine going to school right now, especially with <laughs> like Instagram as, as rampant as it is and Snapchat and Twitter and whatnot. I, I don't know if I would be able to make it. Like it's cra- It's almost like you're yeah. putting on two shows for high school and then like the internet. Yeah. It's it's really hard. Um, I certainly was in high school when social media was – um, really, uh, really prevalent. Obviously, it's bigger now, but um, when I was in high school, everybody had an Instagram, everybody had a Snapchat, everyone had everything, every social platform. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, cruelty that goes on on those platforms. I think that people um, like that idea that they can kind of hide behind a screen mm-hmm. and cut people down with no consequences because, you know, it's the internet. It's It can be anonymous. Right. And, um, you know, Anytime I've ever gotten a hate comment, it's always from, you know, user 23794. With no face picture. With no face right. and no name because, you know, people, they feel like it's a place where they can be cruel without any sort of um, consequences for their actions. And, you know, it uh, it is what it is. But I think that you got to remind yourself that oftentimes people project onto you their own insecurities. Let me tell you something. I want you to keep that same energy, okay? When you see me in person, I still want you to keep that same energy because I feel like they will be the first ones running up to you trying to have a conversation. I think sometimes people just want to be mean for the sake of being mean. I agree with you. I think sometimes people just want to be mean yeah. for the sake of being mean. Um, And I think it's, it's terrible. I don't really... You know, I, I, I had a track on Black Box called Vaccine for Sympathy, um, and it was about sort of sympathizing with the bully. Um, and what I mean by that is I found that all of the girls who absolutely tortured me in high school, later on, learning their own stories was really interesting. You know, some of them were dealing with eating disorders. Some of them were dealing with self-harm. Some of them were dealing with family issues, things that no one would ever imagine but they were taking that pain that they were feeling and how someone had been cruel to them and then pushing it on to, you know, other people. And so it's just cruelty is a bit of a cycle. And, um, you know, if someone's mean to you, I think a lot of times, you know, we we tense up, we get defensive and we act, you know, unkind back. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we got to break that cycle, especially in the school system, because I think that sort of behavior is maybe most pro- prevalent among young kids and and teenagers as well hurt people hurt people hurt people hurt people 
Yes, they do. Except I'm a petty Pisces. So, like, if I'm ever <laughs> famous, I am calling people out by name, first and last name. <laughs> That's funny. That's just who I am. <laughs> so, of course, you know, June is Pride Month. Uh, what are some of the things that you will be doing out and about, of course, around the city? Any activities? Talk to me. This will be my first time performing at Pride this year. I'm mm-hmm. very, very excited to do that. Um, you know, Pride Month for me is just, you know, I love it. I see the rainbow everywhere. I see a community of people come together and and celebrate, um, you know, being different, but also, you know, being the same. Um, I think it's a beautiful time of year. Um, and I also just feel blessed as an artist to be able to put out music that speaks towards, um, you know, what Pride Month really is. Um, and, you know, just kind of help further that message. Love is love. Um, and I don't know when the, the world's going to understand that, but I think there's nothing more beautiful in the world than two people just loving one another. So, um, you know, Pride Month is a beautiful time, and I hope that we as society get to a place where we can just all celebrate one another for exactly who we are. And it's always interesting because it's people that this ain't got, I think the world would be a better place if people would just mind their business. <laughs> You, yes. know what I mean? you know what I mean? Like, this ain't got nothing to do with you. You ain't got nothing to do with this. Mind your yes, business. Yes, exactly. You feel me? I totally agree. But, you know, people are nosy and they don't, they don't mind Hella. their business. Hella nosy. What are uh, some of the things that you're working on next? Gosh. Um, well, you know, Pillbox is going to roll out here. And uh, we're releasing one song every two weeks with a video to go along with it. And that will roll out all the way to my 21st birthday, okay. which is at the end of November. 28th. Yep, November 28th. I'm Mm -hmm. a Sagittarius. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I I probably will just start writing my third project because that's just who I am. I can't stop creating. Um, It's my favorite thing to do. And um, as soon as I wrapped Black Box, I started writing Pillbox, and I'm sure that the second this one is all wrapped up, I'll be right back at it again. You know what? As long as you have the gift, just keep giving it. Exactly. I think, you know, creativity is the best medicine. Music is the best medicine. And for me, as long as I'm doing that, I'm staying healthy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was a blast.